An Arrhenius acid, that's a species that produces hydrogen or hydronium ions in a reaction and has a pH lower than 7. An Arrhenius base is a species that produces hydroxide ions in a reaction and has a pH greater than 7. The definition for Arrhenius acids and bases is somewhat limited and chemists prefer the Bronsted-Lowry theory. It's more useful in a broader range of chemical reactions. The Arrhenius theory is limited in that there are no provisions for reactions that do not occur in aqueous solutions. A Bronsted-Lowry acid is any entity that can donate a hydrogen ion or a hydronium ion. Note that the hydrogen ion is a proton. A Bronsted-Lowry acid must contain a hydrogen that can dissociate as H+. A Bronsted-Lowry base is any entity that can accept a hydrogen or hydronium ion, and a Bronsted-Lowry base must have at least one lone pair of electrons to form a new bond with a proton. Remember that the hydrogen ion is a proton, and using this definition, acids are considered proton donors, and bases are considered proton acceptors. Acids and bases need each other to react. The acid needs a base present to donate the proton, and vice versa. The advantage of the Bronsted-Lowry definition is that it enables us to define acids and bases in terms of chemical reactions rather than simply substances that form acidic and basic solutions. Let's take a look at a couple examples. In this case, we have nitric acid reacting with water to produce ammonium ion and nitrate ion. In this case, HNO3 is going to act as our Bronsted-Lowry acid, and water is going to act as our Bronsted-Lowry base. In this case, the acid is going to donate a proton to the base. In another example, we have ammonia reacting with water to produce hydroxide ion as well as ammonium ion. In this case, the water is going to act as our, our Bronsted-Lowry acid, and the NH3 is going to act as our Bronsted-Lowry base. The water is going to donate the proton to the base. In both of these examples, we can see that water can act as an acid or a base. It can accept or donate protons, and it all depends on which entity is reacting with the water. Water is an example of an amphoteric species. Amphoteric means it's an empirical term referring to a chemical substance which has the ability to act as either an acid or a base. Amphiprotic species, that's a theoretical term defining any entity, ion, or molecule that has the ability to either accept or donate protons. It's important to note that any amphiprotic molecule is also amphoteric, but not any amphoteric mo molecule is amphiprotic. The next term that we'll take a look at is conjugate acid-base pairs. These are chemicals that only differ from one another by the presence of an a or absence of a single hydrogen ion or proton. Every base has a conjugate acid, and every acid will have a conjugate base. The actual acid or base will be on the reactant side of the chemical equation, and the conjugate acid or base will be on the product side. So if in this reaction here, we have hydrogen cyanide reacting with sulfate to produce cyanide and hydrogen sulfate. The acid is this species here, and the base is this species here. The conjugate base and conjugate acid are found on the product side of the reaction. An acid will lose its proton, and it will become the conjugate base, and the conjugate base can accept a proton to return to its acidic form.